The sale of Manchester United is likely to break records in world football and sporting history. Arguably the biggest club in the world's most beloved sport and the giant of English football, it is little surprise that the interest over who buys United may have further implications than just what it means for those inside Old Trafford. Takeovers are no longer the smoke and mirrors world of the past, where an unknown figure would arrive out of thin air to buy the club seemingly overnight. As we saw with Chelsea and Newcastle recently, these sales are now of public interest and fierce scrutiny. I think there isn't a deadline, essentially. Um, there's, there's been lots of soft deadlines. Um, but I don't think they've been particularly stuck to. Um, it, it's obviously moved on to this third round of bids now. The the two main players in in terms of a takeover, um, in terms of Sheikh Jazim's Qatar bid and, and Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos are, are still there. There's there's an unknown number, I would say, of American um, sort of hedge funds and, and private equity firms looking at uh, assessing funding. But yeah, at the moment, the... Um, the process is ongoing and, and we're on to this third round. I mean, it'd be hard to, to believe it could go much further, but I think at the moment it's uh, it's indicative that the Glazers probably aren't getting what they want. So at the moment, it's still being uh, dragged out a little longer. For supporters, the concern is genuine and their hopes for a bright future are obvious, but there is a growing moral question at the heart of football ownership. One of the major bidders in the hunt to buy Manchester United is Sheikh Jassim, the son of a former Qatari prime minister and chairman of the Qatar Islamic Bank. This brings up the growing concerns of state ownership, the allegations of sports washing and fans' responsibility within that. Do Man United fans feel conflicted, even if they want to see the Glazers depart? And should supporters feel that conflict, given the game's ties to state influence already? It kind of just becomes something that it seems that most fan bases ignore or choose to ignore. It's kind of the stuff that people kind of shove in the closet and don't really talk about. Like, oh yeah, I used to do that. That that doesn't really matter. We're, We're winning now. Uh, I think I've seen that with the City fans, um, who obviously they don't want to mention anything that's to do with the their owner. Um, the Newcastle fans, they try and avoid it. I mean, some celebrate it, but most of them just kind of awkwardly dodge around the question when you speak about it. And I think that's probably the way that um, United fans will end up going. I think that they probably would be happy that the, the Glazers have left. I've, I said this, I've said this multiple times. I said that the, the thing is, is that if you wanted to make a, good reputation for yourself with a a large amount of people i don't think there's anything that's probably on the level as being the person who got rid of the glazers from manchester united i mean every game this year there's there's been anti-glazer chants when they won the carabao cup final you know in in the 90th minute of that game when they're they're winning a first trophy in six years all you can hear is we want glazers out and i think if they were to stay you'd probably see it go up a level like you say those there's always been maybe protests bobbling under there's always been unhappiness at at their ownership it did come back to the surface with the european super league i think that was the moment it it tipped over into the realms of uh, of unforgivable for a lot of fans and it is it is something that i'm worried about obviously like i'm worried about it on the case of being associated with some of the bad things that happen in qatar because obviously that's bad and i also kind of annoy it kind of is it's annoyed how some of the fans have changed their viewpoint in terms of they always criticise City for being a club that kind of bought their way up there, that kind of used this money that they didn't earn, that they, they kind of just gained this reputation. And I think it obviously other other clubs have said we said that about other clubs as well. We've probably said that about Newcastle recently. We said that about Chelsea in the past when they got Bramovich. And it just seems that some fans have just instantly that they kind of got a, a whiff of this money. They've gone, I don't care. But are supporters really morally culpable here? It might be easy for an onlooker with no emotional attachment to Manchester United to suggest fans should just boycott, but this isn't McDonald's, Starbucks or Apple. Supporting a football club runs a lot deeper. It's a part of your family traditions, local community, and for a lot of people, provides meaning in life. I'm not sure they really do have a responsibility. I guess it's you know it, it, I guess it's an individual responsibility, if if anything, in terms of what what the fans think is right. I, I think, you know, the, I mean, the United, the United fan base is a pretty un, unwieldy thing in that, you know, there's a huge proportion of online fans who live for the transfers as, as much as the matches and would probably happily take Qatar because they'd, they'd see the the dollar signs and the chances of signing Kylian Mbappe and, and things like that. Uh, I think match day fans would probably rather the United weren't owned by Qatar I think there's a degree that they look at City's success over the last decade and it's more palatable for United because it feels like it's it's been bought, that it's almost, you know, the, the fan base can 
can ignore it in a way because they feel it's it's not legitimate and it's just heavily financed and it's state-owned success and it's it's just not the same as the success United have had. You know, I think back to the last game of last season when United were losing at Crystal Palace, but the away end was celebrating because City pulled it back against um, Aston Villa and, and stopped Liverpool winning the, the league. And obviously part of that is because it's Liverpool, but I think there's also a degree that they see City's success as, as not really being being real when it's obviously they view Liverpool's as, as being hard earned. And obviously if United were to go down the route of being owned by by Qatar as well, and obviously that's a, a, another thing to untangle the Qatari ownership because obviously it is supposedly a, a private bid, um, although I'm sure it's, it's difficult to untangle. Like if you're going out onto the streets and like saying, oh, Qatar does nothing wrong and oh, it's all these beautiful things, it's a beautiful, like, uh, I mean like, if you if you're if you're basically ignoring the evidence that's there and just trying to promote it, like I can I am like, well, don't do that. It also isn't unreasonable for supporters to look at how the game's major and governing bodies have already accepted state influence. Looking at the 2008 takeover of Man City via Abu Dhabi, the 2021 takeover of Newcastle United by PAF with links to Saudi Arabia and the fact that the game's biggest tournament was held in Qatar only recently. Now to some, this may sound like what a battery. But the point is that for an average fan who is not responsible for the actions of FIFA or the Premier League, to demonise them feels like the energy is being put in the wrong place by critics. And you'll get supporters who will point to the the investment in, in private companies in, in this country from Qatar and, and Saudi Arabia and landmarks in London in, in you know, the, the, there is a lot of state ownership within the UK generally in terms of, of landmarks and significant parts of, of British businesses that are, that are owned in by by Qatar and, and Saudi Arabia. So they will they will point to that as well. I, I do I do think there's a feeling certainly amongst like I say match goers and probably those who've been going to the match for a long long time that United don't really need it that they that they shouldn't be a vehicle used for for this kind of thing that. You know, it almost they almost laugh at, at Newcastle in a way, and the way they've accepted it, and having a Saudi Arabian third kit, and and the you know the the, the fancy dress and the element of that when the takeover and the celebrations of the takeover. I think United, a lot of United fans would view themselves as as better than that, um, which is why I think certainly, like I said, the, the match goers and a decent number would would prefer Ineos. But it does, like you said, kind of like the Ashley situation, and it does make it difficult because the current owners uh, are so despised as well. Sports washing is by no means a side issue, given its now frequent involvement in our discourse and debate around ownership and the locations of major tournaments. Qatar potentially owning an 100% stake in England's biggest club would prove to be breaking new ground.